It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, I always find this to be a really exciting moment because um, all of you have traveled from all over India. You've traveled from many other countries all to come in this room. There's been enormous amount of planning to get all of us in this room. I first of all should say that um, for the first three EMs, I probably was involved in every detail of the organization and subsequently have done less and less and less to the point where really uh, I just come. And uh, all the work uh, is really uh, done by a great staff at India Bioscience that you'll meet later, as well as um, the young in investigators who are the co-organizers of this meeting. I mean, I must say, it's really nice to see that theme continue. It was always part of the intention that this meeting is about uh, uh, instilling a spirit of leadership amongst young scientists. So it, it's great um, to see all of the um, um, uh, young scientists invest all of their time to make a great meeting for all of you. So I think we should even thank them multiple times, but now's a good time to thank them right now. Um, and I must say it's also exciting to have this meeting in the Northeast, uh, in Assam. Um, we've been kind of traveled all over uh, India, and this is one sector of India that the meeting has not been uh, at yet. And um, uh, I think it's a great chance for uh, everyone here also to get to know the Northeast and, um, and also uh, help kind of promote the spirit of science uh, in the Northeast as well. Um, so I'll say a few things about <coughs> YIM from um, my own point of view. Um, I, I think also, you know, it's a great moment for all of us just to really uh, stop for a bit at this meeting. All of us are super busy with our science lives and um, I, I think because of that busyness, sometimes we um, kind of miss the big picture uh, of asking ourselves some important questions, which is, for example, why do we do science in the first place? Why is it important? How do we become um, successful uh, in science? And, um, and also, how can um, uh, biology in India overall prosper? So I think some of these um, uh, questions, just for a moment, we can forget about our, our emails and next papers and so forth and, and really kind of uh, look at some of these big picture uh, questions. Um, so we can ask, what is science about? And um, of course, one element of science is uh, it's about experiments, um, it's about data, and just as a shout out to the computational science uh, scientists, it's also about modeling. Um, and of, of course, we're well trained in all of these things as uh, professional scientists, but um, I would say that science is also about, uh, very much about people. And, um, uh, and people play just an essential role in um, what it takes to be good at science. Uh, people determine really what we end up decide working on as scientists. We're influenced by other people who direct those choices, and I think you'll hear that in a number of the talks. You know, people, your colleagues, really determine um, uh, how productive you are as a scientist, uh, whether they're trainees in your lab or whether they're your colleagues at an institute or around the world. Um, and uh, people determine, actually, really how you think about science. Science is is really about ideas, and uh, those ideas are very much influenced by people. And I would also say they influence how happy you are in, in this career as well. And I think that YIM, in part, is, uh, is really an acknowledgement to that, that we're all here for this meeting to interact with one another, to learn from one another, uh, and kind of to celebrate a little bit the importance of, of that roles that people play in our journey as scientists as well. Um, the difficulty is we're, we're well trained in um, doing experiments and data collection and so forth. We're often less well trained in important skills of actually how to 
almost interact with each other and interact with our trainees and be good mentors and be good leaders. And um, there, there's really no class in that. There's no, uh, it's not part of the graduate school agenda. But I, I think you'll appreciate as we go through this meeting, like how important those skills are and actually how difficult they are in many ways and how you actually have to continue throughout your career, even at my stage, to really hone uh, both of these elements um, to really have a successful and enjoyable career in science. So a little bit what I also want to talk about is this, which does inter uh, dovetail with people, which is scientific culture. And really, people throw out the term, I put my own definition here, which is the environment in which people come together to develop new ideas, innovate, and think about results. And um, I personally view scientific culture as absolutely fundamental to uh, creativity and to ultimate success in science. And um, there are some places where there is kind of the right set of ingredients. In this case, I will argue, there is kind of a set of ingredients. They're kind of hard to articulate in many ways, but establishing the right uh, scientific culture can be really fundamental to success. Um, and yet, it's somewhat intangible, and it's a little bit, all of you have to define what that is on your own. Why I say it's, it's also intangible, but also very important, is there's some things we can pay attention to. It's very easy to say, you get so much money from the DBT for your next grant, or uh, a next piece of equipment, or perhaps putting a building at your institute, but really, for the output coming from those buildings and from your equipment, it also uh, has to be done in the right environment, uh, which makes it a great environment, stimulating environment to do science. So I hope this YIM will also challenge you, at least to think about these, uh, about these issues of scientific culture. And it also should challenge you to play an active role in creating your own environment. And I'll say this also for all of the young people here, because in many cases, you've been recipients of environments. You've been in laboratories as a, as a graduate student or even earlier. And now it's a chance, really this very important transition, where it's a chance for you to create your environment, not just to be a recipient, but to actually craft what kind of scientific culture you want to create. And this is very important for you to think about. So um, I'll come back to scientific culture in a second. Um, I thought I'd maybe just give a, a very brief history of EM and India Bioscience. I'm usually asked to do this. You know, where, where did this whole meeting, um, and I must say it's incredibly gratifying, just 11 years, who would have dreamt of that? I mean, this whole YIM started off as a crazy experiment in many ways. Uh, and I remember the first meeting, you know, when there were no expectations, everyone was wondering what in the world is this thing going to be about? It was kind of a magical moment where it was kind of bubbling and uncertain and unknown. And uh, it was really a, a giant experiment to see what would emerge out of it. But the genesis of it was actually a conversation that I had with, um, 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 <laughs> three or four now. Well, three or four um, uh, junior faculty, and they wanted to get together and really talk about mentorship. And uh, they wanted to talk about um, issues that they were concerned about, about how to develop, you know, a successful career as a junior faculty. And it was a great dinner, and many of the issues were. Um, some were India specific, but some of them really rang true of talking to junior faculty anywhere in the world. And it's, it is an incredibly hard transition starting off on your own independent um, uh, research career. And the dinner was great, um, but you know, I also, when, I, when I, I came back, I began to think of the challenge that, you know, how does one scale up these kinds of important conversations about mentorship? It was great to have that one evening with these four junior faculty. But 
there must be many more faculty throughout India that also have a hunger to try to um, have some kind of insight into these uh, questions about starting a lab. And it also struck me in a kind of a convergent theme that India as a whole has to pay attention to these questions that these young, young scientists are, are, are asking um, about how, how to succeed in their own careers. Because for India as a country as a whole, the only way it's going to succeed for its aspirations, for its grand aspirations that it wants to put forth um, in science and in the biological science, it has to pay attention to young scientists because they are really going to be the next generation that's going to live out those aspirations of India as a country. So how does one do that? Um, and the idea of this national level kind of meeting that uh, really brought together all the young scientists. So first of all, the government, senior faculty, can also realize the importance that young people play in the future of science in this country. And second of all, it gives a chance for the young people to feel a collective, to feel like they're not isolated in different uh, departments and different institutions, that they belong to something bigger. That something bigger is a collective of young scientists throughout India, and to feel part of that bigger mission. Um, uh, and, and, and the fact that they're trying to do not only something for their own career, but something aspirational for India as a whole, which I do think is important. Um, so India Bioscience emerged from that first young investigator meeting again. You know, everything happens over dinner or, or maybe a beer. So this next one happened over a beer where the postdocs got together and said, this is a fantastic meeting and we had really little insight into what was happening in India, but so many people really can't make it to this meeting and want the information and also want it kind of on demand to know more about what's happening in India. And out of that came a website, uh, which I initially started working on, called India Bioscience, which now is flourishing as a real entire organization to provide kind of this uh, really outreach program about India biology, not just once a year at a meeting, but year round. And part of the reason I'm also mentioning this is that Things I do feel, and I come from another country, but you know, I've always been impressed that actually things can happen in India. I, I know in many cases there's a certain level of pessimism that you know India is impossible, things can happen in India, but I've had multiple times the opposite experience here. That if you're willing to have a good idea, you're willing to put work into it, you're willing to put your own ATP energy into it, and you want to make it happen, things can happen in India, and they can happen to you in India. They're not going to be handed to you in India. You have to do the work to make it happen. Uh, but if you're willing to do that, I think it's uh, an amazing place, which is why um, I've, I've been involved with many things in India over many years. So let me get back to talk about scientific cultures. And I want to talk to you about that, thinking about cultures at different scales. And the first scale is your own laboratory. And here, and really for the next few days, all of you postdocs who are looking for jobs, I know you're looking for jobs, but you're now promoted magically, instantaneously, right now, to principal investigator of your own lab. So I want you to think like that you know, think past your immediate concern of getting this next job. You can worry about that at the satellite meeting, but I want you to start flipping your mentality to be a lab head right now, because you're going to need that pretty, pretty soon. Um, but the first culture is your lab. The second one is your institution. But I would say you have to think about scientific culture of the nation as a whole. And, you know, we're living in a, obviously, a changing place where I also would argue that you have to think about the world as a whole as well. And I'll talk about some of my own interests in the latter category. So first of all, 
your laboratory. Um, this shows last year retreat where we had kind of a combined scientific research and yoga program at our at our uh, lab retreat. But um, for all of you young uh, investigators, uh, this is the first scientific culture you have to pay attention to, which is to create a great environment for your trainees. And if you succeed in doing that, and it's not easy, good science will come out. Um, and I'm amazed many times hearing some young scientists sometimes talk about people in the laboratory as if they're workers for them, as if they're there to have you get your next promotion, your next grant, or whatever. But I want to flip that mentality around because you were a graduate student not that long ago yourself. And um, you have to think about everyone in your lab as if they're part of your family and your responsibility and that they have their own aspirations independent of your needs and your demands. And part of what you're trying to do in your laboratory is to create an amazing environment for them as well. Um, but this is part of the challenge that, you know, we're going to talk about how to do that well at this EM meeting. And I, I hope you will leave with this question, which is what type of environment will you create in your new laboratory? And I hope you can use this meeting to really think about this question more deeply. I also would think that I know everyone's struggling with their own grants, their own paper, but I think you also have to think about your institution. Because that's the environment where you live in, and you are part of the solution for making that institution great. And I, I will uh, mention just a case study of this at UCSF, which was a no-place institution. No one heard of it, of UCSF, in the 1960s and 70s. It was off the map and um, compared to places like Stanford and MIT and so forth. And what happened? A few amazing people showed up. And of course, these are exceptionally amazing people. But the point was that it didn't take very many people to totally change the course of UCSF completely. Um, and these are some of them here, which, um, you know, uh, who really went on from UCSF to become like director of the NIH, like Harold Varmus, Mike Bishop, chancellor of UCSF, Bruce Alberts, head of the National Academy, Bill Rutter started Chiron, Herb Boyer, uh, uh, started uh, Genentech and Keith Yamamoto. And I hope what you get out of this is that at that time they didn't have any of these lofty positions. They were just there having fun. Having fun being with each other, having fun doing science, having fun caring about the place that they worked at. And out of that uh, UCSF blossomed to become a great institution. And I'll tell you what I think were some of the key factors for this. A strong ethos for education. The faculty there believed actually not just in getting data, but in training. And brought that kind of strong ethos of education. Great interactive forums at the institution. Journal clubs and research talks, well attended by all the faculty. Take a note of that for your research institution when you come home. As I said, a sense of fun, a sense that you work damn hard, but you also play hard, too. It was a great social environment um, that just made it an interesting place, fun place to be. Interaction networks, starting with scientists, scientists who didn't think that their lab was their castle and their domain, but were interacting with the other scientists around them. And very importantly, they did not wait for anyone in the administration to tell them they should be great, or they should do something, or they should change the program. They just changed everything on their own. And it was a complete bottom-up effort uh, in UCSF's kind of march to being recognized as a first-rate place of research. So 
you know, as you can see from this, like, I think about scientific cultures a lot. And, you know, now an interesting, after 30, almost 33 years at UCSF, I never thought I'd leave. I decided to take this new position as executive director of uh, Genelia Research Campus, which is the research campus of, of um, HHMI, just outside of Washington, D.C. It's a really interesting place, very different from a university. It has small laboratories. It has, um, uh, you know, takes on ambitious projects. It has a spirit of uh, working collaboratively between researchers and people who are solely interested in technology development. And it doesn't have tenure, it has non-permanent positions there. It, it does things in a very different way. And I would say one of the reasons I decided to take this job on, and really my responsibility there, is to think about scientific culture at this institution as a whole to try to make it a great experience for every young person that walks through these doors of that research institute. And um, uh, I love that challenge, and that's kind of the challenge I'm going to be taking on. Uh, but I would say, even if you're a junior faculty, you should be asking yourself this question, what difference can you make to your, inst wherever you are, to your own institution? I hope you Again, use this YIM meeting to formulate that question in your mind. I think what's very special about this meeting, too, is thinking about science as a national community. And I would argue India simply has to do this. India has too few biologists here as a country to really think otherwise. Science these days requires critical mass. If India wants to do great science, it has to start thinking of a network of scientists throughout India. And this meeting is very much in that spirit to try to give this awareness that there is a community, that all of you young people will start networking with each other throughout India to help create that community. And um, this is something that I think brings you pleasure. I think the people who have done, be, been organizers of this uh, YIM have been gratified, have found the experience gratifying. And um, I hope you'll leave just also starting to think that that's part of your responsibility for being in India. Also is to try to uh, create a great community of biology in India as well. The world is also a community of science, scientists. And I, this is a, my own, like, only personal part of this talk. This is something that I am deeply interested in. I think we have to be, if we're going to do well as a planet, I would say, is to promote this global interaction of, really, it should be every person in the world. But I think science is a great place to start. Um, for those that aren't, so these are some of the projects in that spirit, which are really to try to democratize science um, at, at a world level. One is iBiology. Um, I think a lot of you know about it. It's an effort to really make the science of great scientists, like Dominique uh, uh, gave a talk for iBiology. I think several other people may have as well. But the point is to... Um, uh, film speakers in, in, a, um, uh, in a studio environment and then have anyone around the world have access to those scientific talks. Whether you're in a small college in India or a small college in the U.S., you can hear uh, great science um, through the globalization that's possible, the good part of the internet, I would say. Um, I'm also very interested about uh, outreach to the public. We need the public also sharing in our in an understanding of what scientists do. And unfortunately, I have to leave the YIM early because this film that uh, I kind of helped to nucleate through iBiology with really two talented filmmakers um, is premiering. It's very exciting. It's premiering at South by Southwest, which is a major, one of the two major film festivals in the United States. And this is a film on genome editing called Human Nature. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's a way of bringing this very uh, important piece of science to public awareness of what 
uh, genome editing is and some of the societal decisions that will have to be made around it. I'd love to show this film in India at some point in time. Um, I think it's also important to think about publication. We'll probably talk about that in the meeting as well. Again, this is something where scientists around the world really have to make decisions about how we want to communicate our research. And I don't think we've been doing that in the best possible way over the last few decades. So accelerating science and publication in biology called ASAP Bio is now an organization. Um, we'd love to get people involved with in India as well to really think about how to improve publication practices in biology so that publication is really working for scientists uh, and not for necessarily other interests. But um, that's another effort. And the latest effort that I'm involved with, which I'm very excited about, is a project to really, I think, change undergraduate education. And um, it's, it's a project uh, called XBio, or the Explorer's Guide to Biology. It's being done collaboratively with technology development team at TNQ in Chennai. So it's an exciting US-India collaboration. And the spirit behind it really is twofold. One, textbooks are enormously costly and they're providing barriers to access to important knowledge about science. There shouldn't be that barrier for access. It's obviously a problem in the US. It's a huge problem around the world. And second of all, we are, I think, doing a disservice to young people by turning them off to what science is and to what biology is. Endless memorization is not what excites us about the scientific profession. And we've got to do a better job communicating the excitement of science and what science really is to young people. Or we risk kind of turning a, a generation of young people uh, and even the future public uh, off to science. So uh, this, this project is uh, internet based, but there'll be downloadable PDFs, but it's about really to change the democratization of the textbook and to really rethink about what a textbook is from bottom up and what we're trying to teach young people. And there's a great group of people involved in this project. And uh, as you can see, it's a pretty illustrious group. And uh, it's coming out soon. If you're interested in this, if you're potentially teaching undergraduates, please, I'm almost done, um, come talk to me about it. I'd love to have some people here experiment using this uh, resource in India. So please come to talk to me at this meeting. And last kind of slide, I'll, I'll just come back to the meeting itself about what you should get out of this meeting. So, Yes, we will talk about mentorship, how to run a lab, et cetera. But I hope that we're also going to talk about great science, all the great science that you're doing at these poster sessions and the, and the talks. It's a great chance just to remember why we are doing science, that it's a wonderful profession. It's exciting. It's great to be at a meeting with a bunch of scientists talking about science. And um, I, that's one part of the meeting, too, that we shouldn't forget why we're in this profession. It's a great time to interact and make personal contacts. Lots of collaborations and friendships have started at this meeting. And I hope that all of you look around to new friends and uh, make those contacts. And I would say to all the senior people or mentors, do not cluster at, with each other at the dinner or the, at all of the meal events, but spread out your job here is not to talk to each other. Your job here is to talk to young scientists. Um, I hope you will leave with a new idea for running your lab. You don't need to take copious notes of everything. Even some things may not make sense to you. If you just leave with one new idea, that's enough to make this meeting worthwhile. And I hope you'll also leave with optimism. Sure. Some things about doing in science in India are not easy. Some things about doing science, period, are not e is not easy. But I do hope you leave with kind of bolstered enthusiasm that you're in the best possible profession that anyone could have. 
even in the hard times, and take a little bit of dose of optimism, not pessimism, take that dose of optimism home with you and spread it around. And also think of yourself as a leader. You know, this has been kind of my secret agenda, I guess for Yim, for many years, which is that India needs leaders at all levels. Leaders for your lab, leaders for your institute, leaders for the country as a whole. And even though you're young, even though you're getting your lab started set up, you should start thinking about yourself as a leader, even doing small things that could be considered uh, ways in which you are enriching, helping other people in some kind of leadership role. And it is working. This year, we've had two and now going to be three local YIMs, not a national one, all stimulated by local leaders in the Kolkata area and the Hyderabad area and the Delhi area. So this spirit of doing something good is emerging and I hope this will take hold of some of you here. So um, that's it. Uh, and I'll just go back to our little rhino here. And uh, I hope you have uh, a wonderful meeting here and I hope it will be um, several exciting days for everyone here. Thank you very much.